Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and in this video I want to do an example uh, for this general torsion equation. In the last couple of videos we were looking at uh, torsional loading, and we finally in the last one came up with the general torsion equation, which you see here, which is that the maximum shear stress over your radius is equal to the torque, applied torque over the polar moment inertia, which is equal to the shear modulus or modulus of rigidity times the angle of twist divided by the length of the shaft. You know, so this is a really important equation when understanding a shaft design or when trying to design a shaft. You know, and in instances where you do know the power and you know the angular velocity, which is, is actually very common, and you don't know the torque, you can use this equation to find it. So the torque is just the power over the angular velocity. So if we look at this equation, general torsion equation, and like we said before, you know, it's, it's a very easily adaptable equation. You can actually t get rid of or just set it equal, you know, the shear max, uh, shear, max shear stress over the radius equal to the torque over the polar moment of inertia. And you end up with an equation that can actually be used to calculate the maximum shear stress. And keep in mind this polar moment inertia, which is totally dependent on the shape of the shaft, is calculated through this method. For a solid, it's just pi over 2 times the radius of the fourth, and hollow, it's pi over 2 times the outside radius to the fourth minus the inside radius to the fourth. So keeping that in mind, let's work through an example. So in this one, we have a pump that operates using a motor. So you got a pump and you've got a motor pump in a motor and the motor has a power of 85 watts so it's 85 watts and the impeller at B is turning at 150 revolutions per minute so this right here is starting to turn at 150 revolutions per minute where it's actually going to couple and you are determining the maximum shear stress and you're, you've been given a diameter of the transmission shaft so a 20 millimeter diameter You've been given a power, you've been given a angular velocity, and you're trying to find this maximum shear stress. So, so we can go ahead and try some just general engineering practices. We lay it out, we've been given the power, angular velocity, and the shaft diameter of 20 millimeters. We're trying to find our maximum shear stress. And we have a little free body diagram. You know, so we've got the diameter of the shaft, which is 20 millimeters, not quite an inch. We give it a velocity and a power. And we've got this torsion equation. So you can start to see what's really coming out. We are looking for this, our shear max, our maximum shear stress. We don't have our material, so we can get rid of our shear modulus. Angle of twist doesn't seem to be an issue, and they didn't give us a length. But what they did give us was a diameter, so that means that we can get our radius and we can calculate our polar moment, polar moment of inertia. And since they give us a, a power and an angular velocity, we can calculate the torque. So what we're going to do is rearrange the equation to this. Our sh maximum shear stress is going to equal to the torque times the radius over the polar moment of inertia. So this is what we're trying to get to. This is need to get all the variables together to to utilize that equation all right so let's move forward let's go ahead and, and start setting that up so so how are we going to get to that point so first we're going to have to convert to some consistent units so you can see they've given us our power in watts we want to get that in newton meters per second they give us our velocity in revolutions per minute we want to get that to radians per second and then we also have been given our diameter in millimeters and we want to get them into millimeter or into meters now keep in mind when you rotate something one revolution it is two pi radians so what else can we do after we convert our units we can determine our torque which is just the power over the velocity so once we got the torque we should calculate our polar moment of inertia because we've got a radius and from there we should be able to utilize our equation so this is the end goal to be able to utilize this equation and find that maximum shear stress 
So let's move forward with that. So let's go to the first couple of steps. Getting our consistent units and determining our torque. And like I said, one revolution is two pi, as well as 60 seconds or in a minute. So let's go about looking at that as, and then, but first let's look at this power. So one watt is one Newton meters per second. So it's one to one ratio. So what we can end up with is 85 watts. It's just 85 Newton meters per second. So, so easy peasy. So now that we've got our watts, let's go ahead and start converting this velocity. Like I said, two pi radians to a revolution, 60 seconds to a minute. So we set that up, 150 revolutions per minute. We've got two pi radians per revolution. So our revolutions cancel. So let's sit back into radians. We've got one minute for every 60 seconds. So we can cancel our minutes. So we're left with radians per second, 15.71. 15.71 radians per second and now we can get the torque which is just the power over the angular velocity since those are in the units we want 85 newton meters per second over 15.71 radians per second so we end up with 5.411 newton meters of torque that we're implying to this system so right now we have got this as we got this so now we need to find our polar moment of inertia so we put our torque over here on the side we're going to be using that later polar moment of inertia and this is our equation we're going to assume that it's a solid shaft and since we know the diameter is 20 millimeters our radius is 10 but we put, put it into meters instead of millimeters so 0 0.01 meters to the fourth power the quantity to the fourth power and when we do the mathematics on that one you know 1.57 times 10 to the negative 8 meters to the fourth power so now we have got the polar moment of inertia so we have our torque we have our radius we've got our polar moment of inertia the only thing left to do is figure out what the maximum shear stress is for this system we got our, these two on the side so we can, don't have to worry about our memory. Now we can determine our shear stress. And this is the equation we're going to use to get us the maximum shear stress. Got our torque, have our radius, and we've calculated our polar moment of inertia. So we've got 5.411 Newton meters, 0 0.01 meters over 1.57 times 10 to the negative eighth meters squared meter to the fourth and since shear stress is newtons per meter squared newtons is fine doesn't cancel with anything meters squared gets rid of this and throws that into meters squared so now we have newtons per meter squared so that's a pascal we do the mathematics we end up with three million four hundred and forty four thousand seven hundred and forty nine newton meters or excuse me, that should be Newton per meter square, or one, no, Pascal. And if we want to put these into a little more professional looking units, we can convert this to 3.44 megapascals. All right, and that is it. That is shear, maximum shear stress is equal to 3.44 megapascals. So in our next video, I was going to work through another example, and this one I'm trying to uh, want to demonstrate the angle of twist. You know, so it, again, giving you different variables, but still going back to our general torsion equation. And go ahead and you know give me the thumbs up, give me some feedback on this video. Uh, go ahead and subscribe or hit the bell. I try to do these twice a week, especially during the summer courses. Um, you know, other than that, I'll see you in the next video.